long ago, the fortress of a rich city in Central Asia was besieged by an army of invaders. On the advice of a wise old sage, the queen of this city, in order to preserve the culture of her people, sent her son Lal, along with her finest craftsmen, to hide in a cave. The city walls gave way under the ramparts of the enemy, and the queen was killed. In the darkness of the abyss that protected him, by candlelight, Lal discovered an unknown red-pink stone, bursting with incredible beauty. Several years later, upon the return of the prince, he gave the stone the name of the young man, Lal. The first spinel had been discovered in the high mountains of Badakhshan, in what is Tajikistan today. In the first decade of the 20th century, the jeweler, Van Cleef & Arpels, settled in the Place Vendôme. They are the inventors of the mysterious invisible jewelry setting. The essence of their craft led them to live in proximity of the greats of this world. Everything in their memory recalls this brilliant complicity. Van Cleef & Arpels was created in 1906 by Alfred Van Cleef and Arsène Arpels, who were married in 1896, and some years after their union, the jewelry house Van Cleef & Arpels was founded. In 1967, Van Cleef & Arpels completed a very important imperial order. In 1966, there was a very discreet contest which was organized by the Iranian government to create the crown for the Empress Farah Diba. This floral-inspired crown is set with over 1,500 precious stones from the Persian treasury. An emerald of over 60 carats sits beside the more than 1,460 diamonds that illuminate this gem. 36 smaller emeralds with a cabochon cut are interspersed among 34 rubies of the most beautiful color. Two beautiful spinels are enthroned at the top of the crown. The precious stones that were used to carry out the order could not leave the confines of the fabulous treasure room of Tehran. It took Pierre Arpels no less than 24 trips to settle the final details of his composition. My name is Nicolas Boss, and I'm the Vice President and Creative Director of Van Cleef & Arpels in Paris. And the piece on which we will work in the coming days is a large necklace made of pearls, cultured pearls, of which the central stone that we have, the stone that is the starting point of this piece, is an opal. And to create a counterpoint in the colors and to the lights of the opal in this necklace, we've selected with our design team Stones that are both very soft in color, rather in a pink-purple tone, and very intense in their brightness. And uh, for a drawing like this one, we will try to focus not on pink sapphires, but on a rare stone that we like to work with a lot. <clears throat> a pink spinel from Tajikistan. But here in this drawing, uh, to complete this, we will need a pear-shaped stone. We do not have one in our safes so we are going to have to look for it. Tajikistan is the smallest mountainous country in Central Asia. The origin of the Tajik language is Iranian. 95% of the population is Muslim. The collapse of the USSR in 1991 led to the creation of the Socialist Republic of Tajikistan, which was ravaged by a civil war that lasted until 1997. 
Ismail Samani created the first independent Persian state, hence the Tajik's Samani currency in reference to him. Tajik Persian culture developed in the cities of Samarkand and Bukhara, in present-day Uzbekistan. It saw flourish many poets and philosophers, among which Rudaki and Ferdowsi, as well as Avicenna, the father of mathematics. The main resources are cotton and aluminum. Small industries and services are elements of growth in the 21st century. Its mountainous terrain gives it a special richness in ornamental stones such as lapis lazuli, but also precious stones such as beryl, ruby, and especially a gem long confused with the latter, the spinel. My name is Janobilov Murodulo. I work here in the science section of the Department of Geology of Tajikistan. I have my degree in geology. Almost all my life I have worked here at the Department of Geology. The country is tiny, but it is geologically rich. In Tajikistan, there are 50 varieties of minerals. Before, when it was part of the Soviet Union, all production found here was sent to other countries, such as Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and especially Russia. In the mines, you cannot work with machines. We must work in a gentle way that requires manual labor. It is like diving for pearls and picking them up at the bottom. Our Tajik president is very careful with the development of the mining industry. This is something close to his heart. And hopefully, in the near future, everything will be better in this country, and we will work well on our extraction of the spinel. We have many gems here in Tajikistan, but they never stay very long in this country, and they're very hard to obtain. If we find a half a kilogram of spinel a year, we're very happy. The arid mountains of the Pamirs, which cover a large part of Tajikistan, were the hunting ground of great conquerors of Central Asia. With a little imagination, it would not be surprising to see Genghis Khan appear at the head of his golden hordes. To get to the Spinel Mines, 700 kilometers separate Dushanbe, the capital city, from Korog, the town bordering Afghanistan, closest to the mines. This country is one of the poorest in Central Asia. And, in this southern region, much of the population is Ismaili, that is to say, followers of the religious leader, the Aga Khan. This direct descendant of Muhammad is considered a god in these regions. It's true that without his financial support, a large part of the population could not survive. He builds roads, hospitals, universities, and electricity is arriving in these villages more and more. A half day of rugged trails allows us to reach the Spinel Mines. Cars that are over 50 years old, abandoned by the Russians in Tajikistan at the time of the explosion of the Soviet bloc, constitute the majority of transportation in this region. There is no industry and little cultivation in these arid areas. Only nomadic herders survive selling the wool of their sheep. Mm. 
Like in many Asian countries, women wear their only fortune on them in the form of jewelry. They especially enjoy the raspberry red stones. The Spinel mine is called Kui Lal, which means Mountain of Gems. At an altitude of 3,600 meters, it dominates the valley of the Panj River on the border with Afghanistan. تاریخ بزرگ دارد. The Kuilal mine has a rich and ancient history. The appearance of the Spinel stone was written about in a book called Shanoma by Fidarvsi, a Tajik writer, and in the fourth dervish, a book that tells the history of the Tajik people. The writer spoke of the Spinel stone in various books, and we learn that it was known since the 7th century. In the 8th and 9th centuries, people named this stone Ruby, and after his explorations, a scientist, Al-Birun, renamed it the Badakhshan Spinel. It is said that the first productions began in the 7th century, and the first people who worked in these mines were the Chinese. But if you research the history, it appears that the Persians were at the start of the opening of these mines. There are currently 410 mines. Different minerals are extracted from these mines. One of them is called lasterite. In its composition, we find elements of the spinel. We know that old dishes were made of porcelain, and lasterite is a mineral used in its composition. The Chinese were making tableware in China cups with this. It is while exploring this ore that the spinel was found. On the mines we work in season for six months. Work begins in early May and lasts until November. In the winter, it gets very cold. Water freezes. We cannot work. And it is for this reason that the work ends in November. Each morning, the foreman gathers his team of miners to give the orders of the day. During the few months of work, miners received a fixed salary paid by the state, to which are added premiums based on their findings. The state appropriates the best stones through a company called Jamast, which manages the country's mineral wealth. A three-year license is issued to miners for finding spinels. The materials used are very old dating from Soviet times. Since the 7th century, men from these regions have continued to drill, dig, and pierce the flank of this mountain. 
Hundreds of tunnels crisscross the subsoil. The foreman is the first to enter the mine after the explosion. Every day he makes a telephone report on the status and production to a very special service of the Ministry of Defense. The whole area is under heavy police surveillance to prevent theft, but also the parallel market and the illegal sale of stones. In early winter, when the cold returns, the operation becomes impossible. The mines are closed and left under control of the police. After the explosions, it is necessary to remove the rocks and see if large crystals are apparent. Then they are put into cars and removed from the mine and sorted in the light of day. The ore is transported and stored outside, waiting for a careful sorting. The rocks rich in precious stones are put on a large screen. Sunlight and a little water bring out the pink and will thus isolate the spinels, as well as another mineral that delights collectors, a very rare yellow-orange stone specific to this place, clinoumite. The gems found usually weigh a few grams, but sometimes a larger crystal is discovered. Forty-five million years ago, the continental drift led India to hit the Asian continent. In a few tens of millions of years afterwards, the clash of the two continents was responsible for the rising of the Himalayas. In the area of impact, at a temperature of around 700 degrees centigrade and at a depth of about 20 kilometers, fluids rich in water, carbon dioxide and other components came in contact with the Earth's mantle and its chemical elements, creating pockets that gave rise to the spinel. The elements present in this environment, such as alumina and magnesium, formed, after the disappearance of the silica present in the medium, the beautiful spinels of Tajikistan. They are found in pockets measuring only a few meters. Chromium, iron and titanium present at the time of their formation will give it a pink color, ranging from pale pink to raspberry.
After a long day of work, miners gather around a restorative dinner. They never fail to tell their stories past and show a glimpse of their loot. The men who work in this mine come from different regions in Tajikistan, but most are from the Pamir, and more particularly, a small village a few hundred meters below the mine, which is called Kui Lal. Traditionally, father and sons in this village are the miners of Lal, which is how Spinel is known in this region. In the winter, when it gets very cold here, the wolves come down the mountain and they fight with the dogs. During these battles, wolves can bite the ears off the dogs, and that's why we cut off their ears. Our village is called Kuilal. We make a lot of agriculture here, wheat, potatoes, peas. There are also many people who keep livestock, and there are also people who work at the mine, of course. It is in these mines that lal is found, precious stones, spinel. My father has been working here for 40 years. I'll take you there and introduce you to him. Father, I want you to meet a gentleman. He's a French gemologist. His name is Patrick. He wants to talk with you about the spinels of Badakhshan, which are well known worldwide. To date, we have found very large spinels. As a matter of fact, in 1985, we found one that was 5 kilos and 800 grams. This stone has been given to the Museum of Leningrad. Then, after the disintegration of the Soviet Union, it was returned to Dushanbe, in Tajikistan, our capital. After, we know nothing of what happened to this stone. We have rich mines, and we could get a lot of precious stones of this size. The old man regularly travels on foot to a nearby village across the hot springs of sulfur water, where many locals come to heal their skin diseases. This regular trip is made to meet a shaman. In Central Asia, shamanism is an old tradition. These people are both preachers and doctors, and everyone is very mindful of their advice. <laughs> Here there are fortune tellers and shamans. There are people who really believe. There are also miners who go to the shaman. And they ask, will they find stones this year? They all want to know if they will find spinels. People here believe. This woman reads the future of her patients in an old Quran. She advises and encourages. She suggests that the old man go into the mine where long ago the black prince's ruby was found. 
the legendary spinel which is on the imperial crown of England. She feels that the old farmer had hidden there, years ago, an exceptional stone in this magical place. It's time to revive it. By candlelight, his hand trembling, the old man digs up his treasure. For centuries, the spinel has always fascinated the greats of this world. It was the stone of crowns. Timur, also known as Timur the Lame, the great conqueror of Central Asia, adored them. Despite the advice of wise old men who predicted a great misfortune if the god of war was released, in 1941, in Samarkand, Russian scientists opened his tomb, on which was inscribed, If I was alive, the world would tremble. Indeed, according to some chroniclers of the time, Incredible things did occur when the tomb was opened. On the first day, the city fell into darkness. On the second day, the lid of the tomb broke. And on the third day, the German army, despite a non-aggression pact, invaded Russia. This precursor of the great Mughals sent armies to protect the mine of Kui Lal. He made them bring back spinels named broom rubies at that time, from the deformation of the Badakhshan language, the region of origin of these stones. Throughout the Mughal period, they found gems on which were inscribed the names of the emperors. There is still, in the treasury of England, a necklace made of spinels, on which there are intaglios called the Necklace of Timur. In this same treasure, on the imperial crown of the Queen of England, is the Black Prince's ruby. This is a spinel gem from the Kuilal mine. It was handed over to the Black Prince in 1367, in gratitude for his loyal service by the King of Castile. Half a century later, it saved the life of King Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt. The stone still bears the marks of the axe it diverted that should have split the skull of the sovereign. My name is Alan Jobbins. My name is Alan Jobbin. I'm the curator of gems at the Museum of Geology in London. The stone is known this stone is known as the Black Prince's ruby, ruby. But, in fact, but in reality, it is not a ruby, it is a spinel. Is a spinel. Yeah, which it is not a rare stone, but it is exceptional. Stone, the feature of the Black Prince's ruby, or rather, the Black Prince's spinel, Black Prince's ruby, is that it's been known since 1367. We can go back six or seven century in the history of this particular so stone. We are looking at six, seven hundred years at least for the history of that particular stone. The, the Black Prince's ruby... The Black Prince's ruby is drilled in four places. Four drill holes, actually. Um, and probably those... Certainly to put the stone on a turban at the top of one's head. The holes are drilled in a very rudimentary way, as you can see in some pictures of the stone. They are like twisted rope, uh, and you can see them if you look at the actual pictures of it. In, in one area... In one area... A large hole has been cut in which a cabochon ruby was put. We can tell the difference between the two because the spinel does not shine as much as the ruby. The spinel doesn't show much, whereas your ruby it glows like, like fire. The shahs of Iran, close to this region, had many in their treasures. They're now in the vault of the Meli Bank in Tehran.
The Tsars also acquired from China a huge spinel from this mine. It reigns imperially on their crown. My name is Evgeny Gapanuk. We are in the exhibition of the Diamond Fund of Russia, on the blessed territory of Moscow's Kremlin, and I am the chief curator. Here are presented some unique collections. This exhibition has no equivalent if you see the level of the exhibited pieces. And among all these valuables are the coronation decorations of the Russian Empire. They occupy a unique position. The Russians called the Empress Catherine the Great. The Great Imperial Crown of Diamonds was created for the coronation day of Catherine the Great in 1762. All the previous crowns did not please the Empress. She asked Ivan Ivanovich Biskov to create a new crown. He received permission from the Empress to use all the loose gems that were in the House of Diamonds of Her Majesty at that time. Four thousand nine hundred and thirty-six diamonds decorate the crowd. Observe the facets on this exceptional one hundred and fifty-six carat diamond, the seventy-five magnificent pearls. The top of the crown is adorned with a spinel weighing approximately 400 carats. This prehistoric stone was purchased by Nicholas Pafarius, who was sent to the court of Chan Chi Kon in Beijing, the emperor of China. A captivating mystery fills this story. The purchase made by Spafarius was legitimate. But what is surprising is that a stone so precious and regal had not attracted the attention of the emperor Bogdichan himself. Usually, in these times, such a unique gem became the property of the reigning sovereign, and they did not leave the boundaries of the country where they were. But in this case, the transaction was legitimate, and the spinel left China. It was sent to Tsar Alexei Mikhailovich, Alexei I, in the goodwill which Nicholas Befarius acquired this gem. And in 1762, the spinel adored the great imperial crown of diamonds. This crown is full of noble, moral, and religious meaning. It is a beauty that reigns forever. The runoff of diamonds is like the sun's glare, and on top of the crown, the spinel shines like a mysterious and remote star. In France, the famous Brittany Coast spinel, shaped like a dragon, adorned the golden fleece of Louis XV. Regularly, but the dates that are kept secret, Stones are carried by donkey caravans or cars to Kurog, the nearest big city. This border region with Afghanistan is heavily secured by the Tajik authorities. The town of Kurog is accessible by air, but no confirmation is ever given on the time or of arrival or departure of flights. The road is long and difficult, but passable, and is the most reliable way to return to the capital of Dushanbe. Despite its collapse, the old habits of the Soviet empire remain entrenched in Tajikistan. Senior officials prefer anonymity and are unwilling to speak openly. Yeah, I'll talk to you.
97, there was a problem when transporting stones to Dushanbe. A stone was stolen. But this stone was of low quality, so the problem was solved very quickly. Since then, no further incident has occurred. From Kuruk to Dushanbe, stones are transported in a car under the protection of the Ministry of Defense. Gunmen with great vigilance are responsible for transportation to the central bank that contains the treasure of Tajikistan. From year to year, the production is stored. It should be noted that the president's ceremonial star is made of natural gems from this country. Spinels, rubies and emeralds have been used in its manufacture. Naturally, the emeralds were bought in Afghanistan for the treasure of Tajikistan. But these are all natural stones. I find that this star is better than some others because it is made of natural stone of Tajik. The stones were cut through the Ministry of Finance. In Kuilal, we find mostly spinels called lal from Badakhshan and clinoyumites, which we call yellow spinel. It's a shame to call it yellow spinel. Spinel is a gem, but fairly widespread while the clinoyumite is extremely rare and exotic. Our first concern is the quality of stones available. Indeed, we would need between 10,000 to 20,000 carats of spinel and 5 to 10,000 carats of rubies to supply the various jewelers in Tajikistan. The jewel industry in Tajikistan is flourishing, despite the low purchasing power of the population. Tajik women are very pretty and particularly like the red-pink stones like spinels. Can I see this ring? Spinel? Spinel? Yes. The lack of production and the particularly high price of spinels makes it that the jewelers often propose fake stones. On this ring, it is a synthetic stone. A synthetic corundum, very often called a French diamond in Asian countries, because it is a French national, Mr. Verneuil, who invented the manufacturing process at the beginning of the 20th century. A stone of this kind does not exceed a few dollars to produce. Its extremely low prices allow the customer to buy a ring that they could not afford with a real spinel. Is this a natural stone? Yes, this is a natural stone. This one is also natural. For some, synthetic corundum is still too expensive. Small shops produce large quantities of imitation stones, out of glass or plastic, whose ridiculously low value is significantly lowering the price of jewelry.
In the 19th century, several goldsmith schools opened in Tajikistan. They specialize in the manufacture of jewelry. Tajik women once adorned their foreheads with discs of silver and gold, with earrings and bells. The tradition of jewelry is still very present, and if stones are often of low value, the quality of the work of gold is quite exceptional, with its delicacy, fragility, and complexity of its compositions. The Tajik women today are crazy about earrings crafted and embellished with spinel, or with imitations. These contemporary jewels recall the wonders of the Bactrian treasure found in the neighboring country of Afghanistan, dating back over 2,000 years. The stones are mounted on 14 karat gold. Pure gold, still called fine gold, is 24 carats. In Europe, gold jewelry is 18 carats. This corresponds to an alloy, where the amount of gold is higher than that in Tajikistan. We rarely use fine gold because it is too soft. In Tajikistan, men often give their betrothed a ring, mounted with one red rose stone before marriage. Marriage is an industry like in many other countries. Polygamy is banned, but practiced, as many men were killed during the civil war, and many have gone to work in Russia. There are still only one million men for seven million inhabitants. Traditional weddings are an opportunity for women to wear their finest jewelry. Very few spinels are officially sold by the government of Tajikistan. However, it seems that lately, transactions have made an exception to this rule. The majority of gemstones are sold rough, but a number are already cut. The stones come to the West, where criteria of quality and size are extremely rigorous, especially among the jewelers in the Place Vendôme. In order to properly cut a spinel, it must first be attached to a wooden stick with wax that has been softened with heat. Once dry, the wax is harder than cement.
The best lapidary cutters cut gemstones the old-fashioned way. Their wheels are not driven by a motor, but manually, in order to adjust the speed as they wish. The wheels are covered with diamond powder, which is the hardest mineral on this planet. First, after determining the size and angle at which the stone will be the fairest, the cutter rough hews the spinel to give it an initial shape, close to the desired final shape. Then he cuts the first facet, the table. That's the biggest facet, the most visible when a stone is mounted. Then he cuts the crown, which are the facets around the table. All these operations require water on the wheel to prevent overheating that could be fatal to the stone. Finally, he cuts the facets at the bottom of the stone, called the breech. It is on these facets that the rays of light entering the stone are reflected, as if off of mirrors. Then they come out through the table. When a stone is well cut, the shimmering and sense of depth are perfect. The last step is the polishing of each facet, and then the cleaning of the stone. The precious gems, made more beautiful by cutting, are then set in the jeweler's creations. The jeweler Van Cleef & Arpels exalts constantly changing material, like a woman who enjoys seduction. In its creation, the intimacy of the woman and the jewel is complete. They become accomplices. The jeweler has made a conquest. Closed to all foreigners, the Kui Lal Mine protects the secrets of the Spinel, a rare and sought-after stone, an emblem of power and total fascination. Only these miners on the other end of the world can touch, with their calloused hands, the mineral that for centuries has represented the blood of Christ on the crowns of the all-powerful. <laughs>